So I think we can resume. Uh, we try to finish not really at one, but a bit before, so you can have lunch. Okay. We're quite on time uh, today. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> so in the previous part of the lecture, we saw this functional programming approach, and we also tested and modified a little bit the example that we had on the on the slides. Right. Uh, let's try to apply the, uh, these concepts uh, to the example that we carry, uh, carried on uh, last time in, in, um, during the lecture. So uh, last time, you remember that uh, um, we uh, worked on uh, um, week zero one, we worked on the, that uh, question and answer example, right? Um, that's the specification exercises. So let's try to create uh, a data structure uh, and um, use it in some ways to handle um, uh, question and answer, um, let's say, objects. So basically we would like to have uh, an object of, let's say, type question that contains a certain set of properties like response, respondent time, etc. And then, qu and then, um, no, sorry, this is answer. So a question with a question, a questioner name and so on, and then answers connected to this question. Okay, and we sketched uh, something during the lecture last time, right? So that was the um, what I've uh, put online at the end of the lecture. Uh, that was inside the QA folder. The QA folder uh, because we needed to import uh, some other packages. You remember we needed uh, the date package to handle the dates, right? So when you have packages, it's better that you have a, f a separate folder, so you have your project uh, description, which is managed automatically by the package manager NPM, right? This is just a recap of what we have been doing uh, Thursday, right? Um, so uh, shortly after the lecture, I've put uh, the uh, complete example online. But that's not what we did last time. We will start from the complete example, but if you go and look for the commits in the code, uh, I think, uh, um, yes, you can go here and have a look at the commits. So, so I show you also how to write with, uh, how to work with this uh, uh, website, you see. This is what the code written during the lecture. Okay, so actually this was the content of the file at the end of the lecture. Uh, I can make it a bit bigger, okay? So actually we just started sketching, uh, you know, the constructor function for question, create a question, but we still needed to define the constructor function for the answer and all the methods inside the answer, uh, inside the question actually, to, to, to filter for answers and so on, okay? So this is a bit uh, time consuming and that's why after the lecture uh, I've uh, uh, put online the uh, complete example, right? So if you look at the complete example, you see that uh, there's uh, this uh, met set of methods, okay? And also a few, you know, uh, answers attached to the question and, s and some console log to show what's happening. So let's have a look at this example and then uh, we will have a look at the uh, methods and see how can we transform these methods in a more functional programming way, okay? And you will see how, how well they will be uh, simplified, let's say, by, the, by using the functional programming method, okay? Uh, so this is online, so you go, into the last version of the repository, the week zero one, okay? 
and you'll get uh, this uh, in Q QA, you'll get this uh, uh, example, okay? So you can just download it, okay? Um, yeah, actually I need to do it as well. <laughs> okay, let's do it uh, and put it into my folder, which is, well, let's do it like this, Enrico. No, let's open it by the Visual Studio, it doesn't matter, okay. Uh, so, open folder, uh, let's open this folder. So, I'm just copying uh, the, the old file uh, from week 01 into week 02, okay? That's the only thing I'm doing. So, first of all, I would like to create another folder, QA. You can work in the same folder, I mean, you don't really need to have a week 01, 02 and so on. That's, that's just an issue for me and for you to see what is happening at each week, okay? So it's easier for you to browse the stuff. But you can always write uh, and, and work in the same folder while you are developing the same example, like this Q&A, and it doesn't really matter, okay? So in this Q&A, let's say I take the, the code from last week, uh, I put it here, so uh, paste, okay? So that's the code I just showed you. Uh, let's no, no, I don't want. Let's have a look uh, at the code. So, well, we use this DayJS library. We saw last time how to use it. Um, there's a question. Uh, last time we wrote the question. So, text, question, or date, and list. There was a list of answers, and then there's the answer that we define in the same way. Okay, because then we want we will want to create object with the new syntax, right? So new answer, new question, and so on, simulating in a certain way what's happening in an object-oriented uh, programming uh, way of doing things, okay? Even though we say the JavaScript is not really, uh, you know, ob uh, cannot really use object as in the other languages. There's no classes in short, okay? So, we just define a set of properties and uh, there's a just a, a utility function to print uh, the content in a more friendly way, okay? With the template literal syntax. Okay, fine. And then we needed um, a certain set of methods, but before seeing the method, let's say we create a question. Best way of enumerating an array in JavaScript, now we know at least four, right? Four of, four in, actually four in is wrong. But the four uh, with the iteration is fine. Why we could add the for each here as well. But mm, there's just, uh, you know, you can write anything here, okay? So you create answers. You first need to attach answers to question. Actually, so we would like to provide an add method to attach an answer to a question. That's what we do in a traditional uh, object-oriented programming way. Because typically, this list uh, is a private field, a private uh, uh, property, okay? Actually, we could have avoided here with JavaScript. You just uh, say, you know, you take the questions so of list dot push and add, add stuff, right? But, I mean, if we are trying to program in a way that is more or less following the object-oriented programming conventions, we have a method to add things, we have a method to process things uh, for the, what is, uh, let's say, supposed to be private, right? To be private, okay? But we have no private properties in JavaScript, okay? So we are just doing it because we are using to think in those terms that this should be quite clean when you think uh, about programming in this way, okay? So. Let's, let me delete this uh, stuff because otherwise you think it's private. I don't want you to think this. And this ad is very simple. Actually, it takes what you pass and it does this list push an answer, okay? So add, add something in the list of answers for the question, okay? And the rest was uh, defined in the exercise. Uh, well, no, this is the new exercise, right? So let's take the old one. Um, so we were asked, uh, well, to create a method add, okay. And then 
find all, to return all the answers of a given respondent. Not just all answers. All answers here, return this list. That's all, right? All answers of a given respondent. And after, after date, all answers uh, after, given after a, a date, uh, a list by date and score, so sorted basically, okay? So let's have a look at those uh, methods. So find all, find all the answers given by a certain auto. So this is the very traditional way in which we, we would program uh, uh, the, 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 the code of this function, okay? It's written in terms of an arrow function. Uh, so it takes one parameter, the author name, and then what does it do? It creates a new array, let filtered list, a new array, um, and then uh, we iterate of, over this list, for of, and then if the respondent of the element is the author name, okay, we push it to, to the filtered list and we return the filtered list, okay? Very simple, uh, very traditional. Uh, when you find something interesting, you push it into the array, the new array, and then you return the array. Actually, that's exactly what the filter does on arrays, right? We, we saw before, uh, arrays have a filter method that exactly does exactly this, okay? So how can we transform this function with the functional programming paradigm using the filter, which is available in this list, okay? Well, uh, we need to pass a callback that in some ways says true when we are interested in the element and false otherwise, okay? Um, so let's try to do this uh, modification, okay? Uh, you will see the difference, okay? So let me... Um, Leave the old code here, okay? So you can appreciate the difference. And then we can remove it, okay? So let's try to um, say, okay, we start from the list of answer, this list, and then we filter, right? So filter. We need to have a callback that takes one element, okay, let's say A, E, or L, say L, okay? We try to use arrow functions whenever possible, just because it's, you know, we need to get used to the syntax, but it's also easier to write and, and you know, read and so on, okay? And then, what's the return value of this arrow function? Return, uh, we would like to say uh, yes or no, so true or false. We would like to say true if the element dot, uh, what was, respondent is equal to the author name, right? Oops. Okay. We just need one more thing. We need to return the array returned by filter, right? This should work, okay? Uh, we will further simplify the syntax, but uh, let's give it a try for now, okay? So you see the difference. Below you have a for of the if inside the for. You need to think what's happening here. You write, uh, you you read, and you write that you want to filter the list if the respondent is equal to the author name. Okay, should be easier to read. Let's try to run this example. So don't forget to save. Okay, I saved it. Uh, okay, let me do some some errors when I'm doing the things, so you know what's happening when, you, when something is wrong. So the, more, the ones of you which are paying more attention, you will 
we know that uh, this code will not run, right? Why? Because, well, actually, module not found. I require data, yes, okay? So what can I do? So we revise what we learned uh, Thursday about uh, packages and so on. When you distribute uh, your code and you're using packages, so uh, code which is not written by you but it's available somewhere else, you need to tell who is using your code, so in this case it's me and me again, that you need a certain package and maybe the version and possibly the hash so that you download the exact same version and you're sure that I, you're using a, the exact same code as me, okay? So let's practice a little bit. Uh, we already created this uh, package lock last time, okay? Let's copy it uh, and let's put it here, right? So paste, okay, package lock. And we install all the stuff here, okay? So now we have, uh, if you see, there are two files, uh, well, our JavaScript and the package lock. How can we install things from here? We can do npm install, that's fine, or npm ci, continuous integration, that was, was able to, to read the package lock. Uh, not really sure install works with only the package lock. No, okay, it needs a package JSON. So it's better to have the package lock and do the CI. No, should work. Uh, no, you should copy the package JSON as well. Sorry, I didn't try this before. But it should, uh, this is a bit strange in any case. Well. So in short, it goes and uh, downloads the JS and checks for the um, for uh, what is has been downloaded for the version and for the hash, okay? So the hash, remember the hash is here, okay? So it went to the registry and so on, uh, it downloaded this file. Actually, it took it from the local cache because it already downloaded it, but it checked uh, it exists uh, anyway. And, uh, and uh, it checked that everything is, uh, is fine and install it, okay? And now we can run the example, right? Okay, so we have the library and we can run the example. And the example is uh, very simple. Well, in the beginning, it prints a date because we wanted to test the date, <laughs> okay? But then it prints, uh, you know, wh what I've been writing in the code, so... You know, I, I wanted to create a question. I printed the question. I created four answers. I added the answers. Uh, I just printed the first answer, okay? And then I want what I asked it to for the method, right? So the answer given by a certain author. I want the answer given by Harry. So there are two. This uh, first and second. Uh, sorry, second and third, so for i, zero, and for in, okay? And you see them here, okay? That's actually the same things uh, they, they, it was happening before with this uh, commented code, but we, we can write it in a more compact way with this functional programming approach, okay? So we have an array, we filter it. Any array has the filter method, you simply call it, and it returns a new array. So just for practice, okay? I try to short this way of writing the, the code as much as possible. You remember that with, uh, um, um, with arrow functions, you can short things a lot, okay? If there's just one parameter, you don't need the brackets. If there's a return value, you just need to specify uh, the, the um, the expression that is the return value without return, without the brackets, and so on, okay? So let's try to short a little bit things. Just to, just to show you, be careful, don't uh, make mistakes in this procedure. You know, just to tell you what happens if I have the brackets and there's no return, okay? 
You see, answer given by the author, none. <laughs> Why? Because the default value, a return value of a function is undefined if it's not specified. That's a basic rule in JavaScript, right? So if you open the brackets, you need to write return, even in arrow functions. So basically undefined converted with the falsy rule means uh, false. So filter always gets false and the result is an empty array, okay? I, I'm showing you these errors because they are very common in the beginning. Maybe it happens to you in the lab tomorrow, okay? So you, you already know, at least you saw one time. And then the, there will be my colleague and uh, the students helping us, the, this one student helping us uh, with the labs, and you can always ask us, of course. You are in the lab because uh, you, 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 in this way you can get help, right? So use that help as much as possible, okay? So uh, we want to add the return uh, again, but we simply write a Boolean expression, okay? That's the normal way in which we write arrow function if possible because it's more compact. Let's save and try again. We try again, this works again. So we did a modification which is fine. <laughs> it's correct, okay? Uh, fine. We can avoid the brackets in, uh, uh, around L, okay? That's just one parameter, right? Fine. Let's save it, let's test it. Still okay, good. Okay, actually the find all is also an arrow function, right? So we could <laughs> do the same. So remove the brackets, okay? Say save and see if it works. Still works, good, okay? So, author name, just one parameter, remove the brackets. Still works, okay. I think that's a maximum compactness that we can achieve, okay? Uh, so you can use new line if you like. I mean, JavaScript, uh, well, except in certain really specific circumstances, doesn't insert uh, the semicolon, you know? So um, still works. Just to make things uh, more readable, you know, because uh, you understand that this notation is very powerful, but sometimes uh, might be a bit difficult to interpret because there's a function, has a parameter of another function, specified as a narrow function, so the return value is implicit. This is assigned, the external function is assigned to a property of an object. So you need to think a little bit on how things are working here. Okay, but I, I mean, it's just, uh, it's not just uh, for my pleasure that I'm showing you, you know, this kind of notation. It's because when you are searching Google or whatever, you know, for code that helps you, you'll find a lot of code written in this way. That's a really the typical way in which a code in JavaScript is written. So we need to get used to, the, to, to this way. At least you need to be able to read it. It's like the foreign languages, at least you need to be able to read it. And then if you speak, maybe you don't speak uh, uh, as well as, you know, as native speakers, that's fine, but you should be able at least to read it, okay? And if you write, want to write in a more, let's say, traditional or, or less uh, implicit way, so putting more brackets and so on, that's still fine, okay? Um, okay. So you see, from the code, the green code here, which is now commented, we have just one line of code, which is actually big because I need to keep the characters big <laughs> for the recording and for you, but I mean, the code is quite compact. It's just a filter with a callback, okay? Uh, and that's all. And we can try to modify other methods in this way. Of course, the 
all methods that creates a list, so an array, so at least something uh, that we have in the object, are more or less suitable for this kind of operations because functional programming methods return arrays, right? So we can try and see if there are other methods suitable for this kind of modification. Well, again, this after date, date, well, this method first, wh what does it do? Well, we add it in the specifications. Uh, so let me close uh, some stuff. Uh, uh, after date returns an array of answers after the given date. So the, the answer has a date as a property. If we go to the answer, there's a date. Okay? Just be careful of how you are representing dates uh, in your program. You need to decide how you keep dates uh, in your program. Just be consistent. There's no really a requirement unless, you know, there's some specific reason, but typically you can keep dates in the form of strings and converting into an object when you need to do some computation, like difference between dates and stuff like that, or formatting, etc. Or you keep the object and then every time you need a string, you need to remember that that's an object and you need to convert it into a string. Okay? But just be consistent. There's no no real, real advantage in doing one thing or the other unless it's explicitly requested for some reason. So actually, when we define answers, I must say we don't even care about what's stored inside dates. Could be a string, could be a reference to an object. That's JavaScript. That's actually scripting, like Python and so on. You don't specify a type. Anything can be put inside the the, the properties of the object. Okay? It's just when we use it that we need to be careful. So when we create answers here, you see, we decided to put reference to objects. Objects which are managed by the library, so the DayJS library, uh, which are created on the fly from strings, because they passed the string, 2024 and so on, and the DayJS creates an object that represents that date. Okay, so when I create an answer here, I'm passing a reference to a newly created object from DJS. And so when I'm using the properties here for filtering here, okay, I, I know that date here in this part of the code, date is a reference to an object. It's not a string, so I don't need to convert it, it into DJS because it's already a reference to a DJS object. And so I can use here methods made available by DJS because it's a reference to a DJS object. If you look into the slides or in the, in the documentation, you see that the date has a method which is called isAfter, which is very convenient for our purposes because we are looking at comparing dates, okay? And comparing dates is something that you don't want to implement yourself, of course, because it's difficult. Uh, year, month, day, and so on, uh, leap, day, uh, leap years, and so on, okay? Um, fine. So this is uh, the very traditional way of doing the filtering as before. Let's modify it, okay? Now we know the trick, so we comment the stuff and we write the same thing in a functional uh, approach, using a functional approach, functional programming approach. So we always start from the array. You need to start from the array, this list, okay? Filter, as before, and you need to call filter, so you open the brackets, those cannot be <laughs> ignored. And you need a callback. What's the callback? Actually, the callback is what you wrote inside the if, because the if decides if you keep stuff or not, right? It must return a Boolean value. So here, we need a, a value, uh, sorry, the element, okay? That's E, so it's even shorter. E the, uh, dot, E is the reference, uh, actually it's a value, of the current element in the array, which for us 
we decided since we do add push, right? It's a reference to a, a, an object of type answer. Okay? E dot so it has all the properties of answer including date. As we wrote here, a date, right? Uh, and then since we decided that date is kept in the form of a reference to a DJS object. We have the is after, after, right? Okay, and we compare it with date, okay? Which is actually this parameter here, this date here, is the same as this one. That's all, right? Uh, as we saw before. Let's let me see. Okay, let's let's compare the two codes. You see, that's the same. Just a new line here. Okay, so I pass a date, and here I'm assuming that I'm passing a DJS object, of course, because you need to compare the DJS object with another DJS object here. And then this list filter gives a callback that returns true if the element has to be kept, okay? So that's a more compact way in which you can write this function. And you see the difference with the rest of the code, right? With the, with the green one, okay? Let's try if it works. <laughs> Never trust me too much, right? After date, uh, so, no worries. After date, uh, 307, 304, and we, we, what, how we called this function. We put a function 303, so th 3rd of March. So we got 4 and 7, okay? So 1 and 2, 1st and 2nd of March has been excluded. It's fine, should work, okay? Okay, good. So we practice a bit, right, with the filter. Um, let's try to practice with something else, otherwise we end up uh, having a lecture on filter only, right? So, let's uh, modify this average score, okay? So average score, what's the average score? Average score is the one here, you, uh, you know, every, uh, every answer has a score. Uh, minus one, minus two, one, three, okay? Let's just sum everything and divide by the number of elements, so by four, okay? As we did before, okay? We can do it uh, with a reduce, but I mean a reduce, uh, I, I like it, but not too much. Let's, let's start with, uh, with um, um, something more useful to us. So let's try to use first a map. Why we need to use a map? Because we have objects of type answer like before, we had uh, the cars, right? Here we have answers, but we only want to have scores in the array, okay? So we would like to have a, an array of numbers, which are the scores, and then we compute the average. So let's create this array, okay? Just to practice a little bit, okay? So let me do as before, let's comment the code. And then, what are we going to do? Uh, <coughs> let me see. Let me still oh, open the, the bracket because I'm not really sure what I'm going to write. And then uh, I remove something if we need it, okay? So let's start with the return so we don't forget the return, okay? At a certain place we need the return. It's just a placeholder at the moment, okay? So let's say <coughs> we want to have uh, an array that has uh, the, uh, only the scores. So const scores equal to this list. And then this is the list of the answers. We want only want the scores. So let's extract the scores as we did with the prices before. Like map. And we need a callback, a callback that returns the value in which we are interested, so the value of the score. 
for each element e e it's the element e dot score i think we call it score right yes so we call it score right so let's check this score so we call it score so e score is exactly the score right uh, we can see it uh, in the code afterward as well okay okay so here we have uh, an array of scores so an array of numbers and then we can compute the averages uh, as we like right so you like this approach let's use this approach okay so let's sum zero const uh, n of uh, uh, scores sum n uh, return sum divided by scores okay so the average was 0 0.25 let's see if it works yes 0 0.25 okay good i can pass the exam maybe okay so scores is uh, an array of numbers okay we can debug the stuff as we did before so let's come here okay oh let's break afterwards so, so the score is already ready okay let's run the program this is a very simple program i mean we, we uh, until we are not programming in the web environment so we need to debug in the browser which will be more difficult we try not to do that uh, it's a program running on our computer so we can debug it with the environment okay so as we did before uh, not I think uh, uh, run current, f no, run current, ah, another program is already running, uh, yes, but I wanted to stop the old one, <laughs> so I think uh, we should debug, stop, no, it's already stopped. So why it says another program is running? No, it's fine. Okay. Uh, oh, we need to to attach to this file. So. Uh, when things like this happen, the best the best uh, thing I suggest to you is to add a configuration. Okay. So basically, it tells the so I just press the here, add configuration. Just tell the, the um, Visual Studio code which is the file to execute. Because when you have folders, subfolders and stuff, it might get confused, okay? Let's add the configuration for Node.js. And in short, it will say which is the program to run, okay? And so now, so it adds this file launch.json, but it's not really needed for, for us to save. Let's try if it, this works. Hopefully, yes. Yes. Okay. If it's just one file, it should work without any configuration. But if you have more than one file, it starts to get confused. Okay. Especially if there are subfolders. But this is just to show you if you really need to debug stuff, because with the console log, more or less, you... you solve all the problems and doubts uh, that you might have but you want to you you would like to run this debugger of okay that's fine okay let's have a look uh, we are in the scope of average score which actually you find you find it here on the top of the core stack so you remember the core stack right and uh, scores actually that's an array of four integer values so it's a, uh, actually it's not integer, that's wrong. It's numbers for JavaScript. We don't know if it's integer or not. It's number for JavaScript, right? Three, one, minus two, minus one. And then we do our usual computation like uh, C or, or whatever. So you loop, you get sum. So sum at a certain point uh, will be the sum of all the elements. Why I cannot move this? Well, okay. Uh, sum 2 and so on and then you divide the sum that's 1 divided by 4 that's not to see so you get uh, the 0 0.25 right okay 
Fine, so you, you've seen how to debug, uh, let's say, a more complex program. Okay, let's stop it because then I forget. Okay, uh, fine, so let's go back to the files. So, one more step. Let's avoid the doing these operations. We have seen the reduce. Let's practice at least once with the reduce. Okay? How can we do the reduce? Well, let's say scores, scores, reduce. Scores is an array, so it has a, the reduce method. Open, you need a callback. Callback, we write arrow function is possible. But we need more than one parameter, so we need the bracket here. Right, so uh, that's the accumulator. Well, let's write it sum so it's easier to understand. The value or, or the e, e, maybe it's confusing, val, okay? And then we will see if somebody, something else is needed. We need to return. Well, when you want to sum, it's easy, right? It's ac plus sum. Okay, then the initial value, zero, because in the sum you want to start from zero, otherwise you already have something in the, in the accumulator and you don't s sum the, the values, but you add what, what you put in the beginning here. And so is everything enough uh, here? Well, if we just want the sum, that's fine. Uh, const uh, sum, yes. Uh, sum, yes. And then let's say return sum divided by uh, scores length, right? So again, let's test it. You are in the debug console, you need to go to the terminal. Oh, what's wrong? I didn't save. Act is not defined. Uh, I call it sum, right? <laughs> Sorry. Sum plus val. Ak was on the slides. Val. Okay. Okay, 0 0.25. Fine. Great. Uh, okay, one step more. Uh, we don't like to have, uh, you know, separate instructions like map and then reduce and so on. We say they are chainable. They, they can be put into a chain in a list, right? So let's attach everything together. So this uh, map, we put it here. Oops. Let me see if I can get it right. This map. We don't really need scores. The scores was useful to debug a bit, right? This list map, here we know that at this point we have the array of the four numbers. And then we can run the reduce and we get the sum and we divide by the length, right? So let's try if it works. No, scores is not defined. Where is the scores? Scores. Yeah, that's a problem, right? We, for, uh, we lost the scores, right? So we don't know actually the length of the array. I mean, we can, of course, we know that the map doesn't change the size. We can write this list, right? But so this works. But uh, as we did in the slides before, if we have a filter before, we don't know the number, right? So that starts to be a problem for the reduce. And so that's why we can write inside the reduce, let's say the trick that we have seen before, right? So instead of add, adding the value, let's add the value which is already reduced by the total number of values. So we don't have to do the division afterwards. So val divided by, yeah, what? I, uh, of course, I can say I can write this list, but that's this not a place where I, I should write this list. Th that's a callback. They should give it to me. So the third parameter is the index. I cannot do anything about this. It's useless, I know. But the 
the way in which parameters are passed is positional in JavaScript as well as in other languages. So if in the third parameter there's the index, in the third parameter there will be the index. I cannot do anything about this. I, I need to keep it and use it. I mean, I specify it in the callback. So it gets discarded. And then the array, or oh, R. Let's, let, let's write it R so we don't confuse it with the array, okay? So here we have R dot length, length, right? And so this is not the sum anymore. This is the average, right? So we can, we can uh, remove this instruction and we can say return average, right? Let's save it and check it. 0 0.25, fine. Okay? Last step. You see, I define a variable and then return. Just put a return here. Okay? Just put a return in the beginning without creating a temp temporary variable uh, average. Right? This is an arrow function. <laughs> Let's do the last trick, okay? Let's remove this, uh, this bracket. This bracket, this is a single expression, right? So we can use it, even if it's long like this. I mean, it's two lines of code, but it's, it's a single expression for JavaScript, right? So we can even remove the brackets and the return. I know this is a bit extreme, let's say. <laughs> OK, but this will be very, very convenient when you are in the web application. We will be programming in React. You have a place where you should put into brackets a list of things, so basically an array. And you would like to have an expression where you can filter, where you can do operations without writing too much code. OK, and that's why we are trying to learn this way of uh, programming things. So when things are simple, so actually they are just numbers. So here we have four numbers and we, want it, we would like to have the average, right? Okay, fine. So we are spending quite a lot of time on this example because I expect it will be very useful for you tomorrow in the lab and in the next weeks as well. We won't spend so much time in, on examples uh, uh, next week, okay? When, when it's needed, yes, but uh, I mean, uh, we need to practice a little bit. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, concepts are not always uh, easy to grasp. Okay, uh, so let me see what else we can do. Uh, the sort is already in a good shape, let's say. So actually remember, uh, remember that the sort is not one of the methods that we have seen in uh, the, you know, uh, functional programming approach. Could have been. But you know, JavaScript was designed in 10 days. They did a, a sort function on the arrays that was designed to work in place. So it's not suitable for, the, for chaining because it modified the original array. So we can use the sort, that's okay. Just be careful, duplicate the array, okay? So we don't uh, change things in the original array unless you really want to change things. Here, uh, I mean, there's no real, sp I'm not sure if we need uh, no a specific order for the answers or not. So that depends on the requirements of the application. Nothing is specified. So we could have even used the, you know, the, the original array, but just be careful. S since you are passing something outside your let's say, sort of object that you have in JavaScript, you, you probably wouldn't like to pass exactly the reference to the array that you have inside the object. You know, th this, this should be private in our idea, right? So it's better to duplicate uh, this array if possible, okay? And you see, it's very convenient, uh, this, the spread syntax, the three dots, it's very convenient for doing this kind of things in, in, um, in JavaScript. You can even write things like this, you know? 
without defining the intermediate variable, like here for the list by date. You create the array, and then on the array you can write dot something directly on the array, on the definition. I mean, as close the square bracket, dot something. I don't want to, to exceed too much, but you could even remove the return and the brackets here, <laughs> but I don't want to be too tedious for this, okay? Okay, fine. Um, yes, so, filter, yeah, I don't think there are additional things we should do on this example. Let me have a look at the exercise for this week uh, that was actually to use the functional programming paradigm and callbacks to rewrite some of the method of exercise three. Okay, so the, the, the one we, we saw here, so the question and answer. Uh, we can define maybe an additional function just to practice. Uh, um, yeah, you see that uh, we have, uh, uh, where's the, the, the a, a few, what, uh, I moved the, 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 the um, we have a few methods that do the filtering, right? So uh, why should we, you know, really uh, define the callback here and not uh, asking for a callback to be passed by who is calling our method? So let's say we can define a new method Let's say generic filter, okay? And let uh, who is passing the, um, who is calling us for filtering to, f to give us a filter function, okay? Of course it has to know something about the objects to filter, but this is a, let's say a more generic way of filtering things. But just to show you that I can pass a function to another function, okay? And uh, so I call back, that's what we saw this morning, a synchronous callback because it will be executed every time uh, it's uh, um, uh, uh, the, the, the filter iterates over the array. So this list filter, what? Actually, this should be a function, so you should pass something, right? So filter function, filter, filter function, arrow, this, this, filter, filter function. This is a very generic way of filtering. I'm expecting not a value, so not a date, not a name, uh, author name, and so on. I can pass a callback and take the callback. I don't even use the callback. I just pass it directly to the filter, okay? Just to show you how things can get uh, complicated in a certain way, but uh, I mean, th there's a uh, logic behind this uh, way of programming for JavaScript, right? So let me try this generic filter with something. Uh, what do we have in the answer? Uh, we have a score. Uh, let's take uh, the, the scores, uh, the positive scores, okay? So let's append in the end. Uh, so Q, Q uh, filter function, no, generic filter, sorry. So uh, element. So actually that would be the answer, right? So, uh, because uh, here we wrote, uh, what do we wrote? Yeah, we wrote operating on this list, this is a list of answers, right? So let's call it A for one, once, okay? Just to show you, this is completely arbitrary, that's up to you, it's just the, the parameter that represents a single value in the array. A score, 
greater than zero. Okay? Okay. And then, that's a list, right? So, con const uh, ans uh, array. Let me call it array. I don't want to call it list because it confuses a bit. Console log uh, ans array. Okay? Just to do things very simple, as you probably would do in the lab tomorrow. So you see, <laughs> that's the answer. That's a list, right? That's a list. Oh, that's an array, actually. Sorry. Anyway. Uh, of answers, there are two answers, hopefully with the score positive. Yeah, three and one. But why? I was printing nice things before, and now it's not printing something nice. Because I just, uh, I just told the console log, this is an array, just print it, <laughs> OK? But this works well if in the array there are primitive values, like numbers, like uh, strings. If there are more complex values, you should you know, convert them into strings in a format that is suitable for you, right? So, uh, something that is more uh, nice to see. Okay, and so let's do what I've done until now. So we'll see the for each. Okay, so actually the ANS array is an array. I can iterate over the array. Of course, I can write for ANS of uh, ANS array, etc., and console log, etc. But we have the for each method now, right? So let's try to use it. So that's the answer array for each. We want to print it, so iterating the print operation for each uh, element is exactly what we would like to do, right? So the for each is exactly uh, is suitable for this purpose. It's a very, very well suited, I mean. So uh, actually, I don't want the console log outside because now I'm iterating over the array, and in the for each, I will do the print. Okay? Just to show you how powerful this stuff could be, I just write console log here, okay? Just to show you, nothing will change, but I'm passing a function that takes one parameter, one or more actually parameters, it is the console log standard library function to the for each, and then for each will execute it on each element of the array. Actually, that's uh, the same that was happening before. So, uh, you know, uh, nothing will really change. But this is just to show you that I can pass any functions wherever a function is expected. So, wherever actually a callback is expected, because we say that uh, a parameter of a function, which is a function, is called callback, right? But let's do something more useful, okay? Because the console log already does it. It says it, 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 it sees it's an array, and so it does it for each inside. So there's no point in doing a thing like this. We would like to do for each element a console log, so log, so print, of what? Of a version of the element converted into a string, as I did before, OK? So this str is something that I already defined in the code before, is in the answer here, and it's a function where I return the text, the respondent, and so on, formatted in a way that is nice. So it can be printed in a way that, that I like, okay? So the date is formatted in year, month, date, etc. right? So really nothing special, but I can print something in a more nice way, okay? Let me leave some room, otherwise uh, you don't understand anything here. Uh, generic filter, right? Okay. So this is my generic filter. Can you see the positive uh, values of score? What's the difference? between this and the previous ones. Well, the previous ones got one parameter and then the callback specified inside the function 
within the uh, question, right? Here, I just passed a function directly, and this function will be used to do the filtering, okay? So you can pass functions everywhere. That's the message of this uh, lecture, this morning, I would say, <laughs> okay? And these functions, which are executed synchronously, so it means uh, who is calling the callback, wait for the end of the execution of the callback each time. So it does an iteration, calls the callback, waits for the end of the callback. Uh, this is a, a nice way of filtering uh, arrays and, and things like this, okay? And you see that this function can be defined everywhere and passed everywhere, okay? Because Java, JavaScript is so flexible uh, you don't even have to match the number of parameters because extra parameters get discarded. Simply not used or get discarded, like we did with the console log, okay? Which is a function that gets a number, a variable number of parameters and so on, okay? Uh, so this is a generic filter and yeah, could be useful. Uh, the for each, okay? For each, please try to limit the for each use Okay, because, because it basically it has a side effect, right? Uh, here it's just printing, but if you go and modify some other data structure, you come back to, uh, you go outside the functional programming uh, paradigm, and so you start having side effects, uh, and you need to think about uh, what is doing your code outside what you have written, which is exactly the same condition as if you write a more complex code like this, right? You need to think about all the operations that are happening here, okay? And you cannot just simply read, filter, or for each, and say, well, for each, it will repeat something on, on the array, and what is done, what is doing is, uh, uh, let's say here, printing, and that's fine, okay? There are a lot of uh, uh, colleagues uh, of you uh, last year, I'm talking about last year, of course, uh, in another class that was, you know, the class similar to this without the focus on security, uh, that used the for each to create new arrays, okay? Of course, it's possible. We can write for each and, and, and do things like uh, uh, array push and so on. But if you need to write the for each in this way, probably you shouldn't use the for each. It's probably a map right? Or a filter, if you put a if inside, right? So, use the correct functional programming method because it's much more readable and much less prone to errors, okay? Uh, fine. I know this uh, example was maybe a bit boring, <laughs> I know, but uh, we will uh, uh, reuse it uh, um, next time when we are, uh, uh, you know, uh, Actually, for the whole uh, course, because uh, this is the base of the application, web application that we will, uh, uh, that we are going to construct in the next uh, in the next weeks. Uh, let me see. Yeah, more or less, we have we have done everything. Uh, so I'm not starting a new topic uh, now. I just wanted to tell you what's going to happen this week. Well, tomorrow you will have the lab. Uh, Thursday there will be no lecture, okay? So nobody in our room. If you want to use the room, probably you can. Uh, and next time, so it means uh, next Monday, in a week from now, we will talk more about asynchronous programming because I tricked you this morning. I told you, well, I'm starting to talk about asynchronous programming. In a certain sense, it's true, but we only talked about synchronous right, callbacks at the moment. Uh, there are asynchronous callbacks uh, in JavaScript, and the, this will take one week for sure, okay, next week, the whole week to discuss, because uh, all the operations in the browser will be asynchronous. Everything is asynchronous. You load the data from a server, and you need to wait for the reply. But you cannot simply wait uh, and block everything. Or you cannot wait for the action of the users, right? Okay? So you will need to learn how to write a synchronous code. 
That means both in the callbacks and, bo and in your code. Okay? But that's the topic of the next lecture. So remember, tomorrow, two, uh, two slots for the lab. You are divided into two groups. They try to stick to your group just for tomorrow, and then you'll see how many people there are, and you can adjust if you want to change. Okay? Okay. I think we can stop here. Have a, a good lunch. And if you have a questions, of course, I'm here. Thank you. <laughs>